Hey everyone, it's Andrew Stone here and it is such a privilege to be with you this weekend. Being able to speak into your kingdom reality and of course the outworking of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. So today's message is called Kingdom Momentum. I want to read you this scripture that Jesus says in Luke chapter 12. It says, Do not fear, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I love how it says, do not fear, which means that it brings a peace to our soul to think that when the kingdom of heaven enters our reality, there is nothing to fear. You know, when we are blessed with the kingdom of heaven and what it's doing in our lives, sometimes we can fear, are we good enough? Did we do enough? What if we can lose it? What All these things can come up because of our soul and sometimes because of our insecurities. However, Jesus says, do not fear. Let me that let that just be the word for you even in this moment. Do not fear, for it is your father's. I like that. For it is your father's good pleasure. Notice he doesn't say, you know, someone else's father or he, he uses a relational term when speaking about how the father gives the kingdom of heaven to his children. He says he gives the kingdom as a gift. It's a gift, unearned, undeserved favor. It is a gift. Therefore, if the Father gives us a gift of a kingdom of heaven reality, a kingdom of heaven inheritance, because when 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 Jesus is explaining this particular verse, he's connecting relationally with humanity. He is saying that it isn't just this God up there in the sky that you, you know, this magic genie that gives out things when you're good enough or it's not Santa Claus with your, with your list and checking it twice. This is a father giving gifts to children. In essence, saying this is not just for a servant or a slave. This is for a DNA inheritance legacy that goes through generations. So the kingdom of heaven you do not need to fear, can I lose it? Will I get it? Can I? Have I done enough for it? Because it is the Father's. And if we identify ourselves and posture our hearts and lives as children, sons and daughters of God, in Romans 8, if we're ever forgetting, the Holy Spirit will even remind us that we are children of God, co-heirs with Him. And therefore, what is true of Jesus is true of us. So there is an inheritance in the kingdom of heaven. And it says here that it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The reason I needed to start there was because the rest of the message using kingdom momentum, we need to posture ourselves as children of God. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to connect together and knit together the narrative of the kingdom. So let's keep going. Charles Fuller said this, who was the dean, the president, the founder, of the Fuller Seminary in America. It says this, the kingdom of heaven is the now and the not yet kingdom. So when we talk about the kingdom of heaven, the fullness of the kingdom and all of the kingdom is here and now. The paradox of it though, not the contradiction, the paradox of it though, is that we have access to all of it now, but there's more to come. Much like our awareness of the Holy Spirit. When we were filled with the Holy Spirit, we got all of the Holy Spirit, all of the person of the Holy Spirit, all of the benefits of the Holy Spirit. But as we all know, we're on a journey. So we have all and more at the same time. It's not a contradiction. It's a paradox. So the kingdom of heaven reality, we have access to all of it now, but we also are growing in our awareness of what it looks like here and now. Because my kingdom of heaven revelation right now, today, I'm hoping is going to become greater and grow in the next seven days, month, year, five years, 10 years, that, that, my, that my awareness in 10 years time is gonna be different to what it is now, but I have all of it now, but I'll have all of it later and there's still more to come. So all and more. This is where Jesus teaches the kingdom. You actually see Jesus' most predominant and prolific message is the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John the Baptist used the term as well. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In essence, change your way of thinking. Don't just think from the outside in. Think from the inside out. There is a spiritual kingdom reality that is coming forth. 
not just from the kingdoms of the world that you see, but one that is invisible, one that is coming through and forth from God to his children. And so change the way that you think, because what you're about to see is going to be different to anything you've ever seen before. And then Jesus carries that message right through his ministry. He teaches it in these verses, but he says it in a lot more places too. And so the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When he says it's at hand, that's a euphemism. It's a way of speaking to say it's extremely close, almost as close as the air that you breathe, that it's touchable, it's tangible, it's right there in front of you. It's not some far distant place, but it is actually the kingdom of heaven is close. It's engaging. It wants to be present in your world here and now. So let's jump to our first junction of thought, which is breath. Let's read this in Genesis 2. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. When we read this story, we see the intimacy of this moment. See, God formed everything else with his hands. Yet, when it came to breathing into humanity, when it came into breathing and bringing life to what he said was very good, he got close. He became intimate with in the sense of he gave that essence that which he carried and he breathed into humanity. He had to get close. This This moment is so beautiful in how it's written and how it explains the connection between God and us. It says that he breathed. That term breathe doesn't mean he just went, all the best guys, have fun with it. It is actually a moment where breathing is present continuous. It means he breathed into humanity and never stopped. He breathed into Adam and he became a living being. When I was speaking to some Messianic Jews, people that understand the scriptures, see Jesus as their Messiah. When they read this, and I was speaking to them and speaking to them in a a conference that we were doing, what ended up happening is they explained this to me. This is how they explained it. And this is so wonderful. They said that when that term breathes, the phrase in Hebrew, one of the ways to say it and pronounce it, is Vayipak. And it means and explains the same function of a clarinet player blowing or breathing through the instrument and then playing out that wonderful sound. It is a filling that brings out something. And it is an explosive term. And the way that we can see this moment is that he breathed into humanity. He breathed into Adam. And in that moment, the kingdom of heaven and all of its benefits were exploding in and through and around Adam in that moment. The beauty of it is, is that it's present continuous. So with every breath that we take here and now, because the kingdom of heaven is so close, is that every breath we take, God is breathing with us. We see this in Daniel 5.23, when he says, And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which do not see or hear or know. And the God who holds your breath, who holds your breath in his hand and owns all your ways, you have not glorified. Daniel is speaking to King a a pagan king, a king that is against an anti-god. He builds idols of wood and stone and gold and bronze. and, And he says that, have you missed it? You've missed the point. The very God who holds your breath, you have not glorified. Every breath we take, we are reliant on God holding it and handing it to us. In essence, so close, the kingdom of heaven is at hand that every time we breathe, it's present continuous of God saying, let the kingdom of heaven, as you receive it as a child, as a gift, let the kingdom of heaven burst in you, through you and out of you. Because when you breathe, I am breathing 
with you. You wonder where the kingdom of heaven is. It is not some far away distant land. It is as close as the air that we breathe. In John 20, 22, it says this. So Jesus said to them again, peace to you. This is after resurrection. As the father has sent me, I also send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Notice how he is replaying Genesis. And how do we know this? Because Paul then later writes, for don't you know you are a new creation? See, God breathed in the first creation. Jesus was redoing it in the new creation. That moment where as we breathe, we can just think that as every breath that we take, even you're breathing right now subconsciously, you're not even thinking about it. But yet in every single breath, God is so present with us. He's close. And the kingdom of heaven reality is bursting in us, through us, and out of us. And Jesus reminds us that resurrection life is in every single breath that we take. The only difference is how aware are we with every breath that we take that he is with us and for us and wants to move through us to see his kingdom realities here on earth. Which leads me to our second thought word. What does the word mean? And when I say word, I'm talking about words becoming flesh. What we agree with manifests because we live in a voice activated reality. So when, when the Holy Spirit and all of the Trinity was hovering over the, 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 the earth and it was formless and void and, and there was chaos amongst the deep, it says he spoke. And in the beginning, and this word became flesh. And so there is this voice activated reality that God gives us, this create the, this creativity that he gives us. And in Genesis 2, 19, we see this. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So God formed all these creatures. The only things that God didn't have Adam name was the two trees and the four rivers and of course himself. But the fact is, is that God named a few things and then said, Adam, you name the rest. You take that which I have created for you to have dominion in, for you to have access to. I'll give you the keys to this whole space, this kingdom, but you get to name it. So not only do we have to be aware of the kingdom of heaven with every breath that we take, we have to be able to start agreeing with what God has formed around us in order to bring the kingdom of heaven here, in order to bring it to manifestation. So when he says, I, he formed them and then he brought them to Adam, in essence, he was saying, I form things around you, but I'm giving you the creative power to name it, define it. I'm giving you a word, in, in essence, saying this, whatever you agree with becomes a reality. We later see it in Matthew 16, in the message version, it says it like this. And that's not all. You will have complete and free access to God's kingdom. Isn't that good? Why? Because it's a gift. You'll have access to God's kingdom, keys to open any and every door. No more barriers between heaven and earth and earth and heaven. A yes on earth is yes in heaven. A no on earth is no in heaven. Now, when we talk about this, this is the binding and loosing verse in the New King James. But when we speak about this, sometimes we only talk about prayer. Sometimes we're only talking about bad things, like we're going to bind this and loose this. It's not only that. That's in, it's inclusive of, but it's not only that. It's the idea that our agreements carry such power spiritually and naturally. So that whatever I agree with starts moving heaven and earth together. See, we need to be a convergent zone of heaven and earth. And therefore, what, what's, what's the agreement? What's saying yes and no? Is our words, our agreements. See, if we agree with what God has already said, we get to see what he's already seen. I'll say that again for those taking notes. If we agree with what God has already said, we get to see what he's already seen. This is the power of agreement. So that I, even if I say no to good, I might say no to the call of God on my life. Well then, because I'm disagreeing with God's plan for my life, heaven can't invade in my world. Heaven can't access me. Will I be blessed and will God love me still? Yes, but my, the power of how much the kingdom of heaven works through my life 
has everything to do with my agreements. It has thing, it, it, if I want to see it practically work in my life, it has to do with my agreements. Will I be breathing in the kingdom of heaven with every breath that I take? Absolutely. Will it burst in and through me and out of me? Absolutely. But if I want to see it practically outworked in my life, I need to come into a space where I can agree with what God has already said, with what he is saying into my world. So that when I say yes to him, I'm saying a big yes to whatever he needs to see happen on earth. And whatever I say no to, because there is power. Whatever I say yes to, that means I'm saying no to a multitude of things. Whatever I say no to, I'm saying yes to a multitude of things. So what we have to realize is that our agreements are extremely important because we need to not just agree with a good plan or just a good strategy or just what I think. It's an agreement with God. What have you said? And therefore, I'm going to agree with that, even if I don't fully understand it, because that's the way heaven and earth converge. But what we learn in all of this is that God forms and we name. So in Genesis, he formed all these creatures and then brings them to Adam. And you can tell when Adam started getting bored because, the, you know, the first animals he must have brought to, to Adam were like the hippopotamus and the giraffe and like the really interesting, the orangutan, all those, all those interesting creatures. And then towards the end, it would have been like dog, cat, everybody gets tired. Adam must have been like, yeah, that's an ant. Just call it an ant. But he brings this creation to Adam and says, you define it. Hey, can I challenge us today together in a kingdom space? What has God formed for us that we have defined with limitations? I have so many stories for you and I don't have time to jump into it all. But the fact is, is that there have been ministries and purposes and callings in my life that I have called particular things, defined in particular ways, and then been challenged by the Holy Spirit to say, why did you call it that? Because I called you for different nations. I've, I've called you to engage, to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And the way you've named something has limited its influence because I formed it, but I gave you the power to name it. And that's the challenge for me as we speak over things and give a prophetic utterance to the realities that God has given us and formed for us, we set its limitations. That's why you don't, this, this is why names are so important with children. Like how many Judases have you ever seen? Like Judas was a pretty common name back then, but after the Judas did what the Judas did, how many Judas, I've never seen a baby dedication where the pastor goes, Hey church, we're so excited today. We're going to dedicate little baby Judas. Won't happen. Why? Because we know that that name means something now. It has been defined by something. But let's do the opposite. Let's define things that give God room to move. God give, It gives God creative space to fulfill the very call and agreement he has over your life. Chris Valentin says it this way, the invisible kingdom inside a person ultimately becomes the visible kingdom around them. In essence, the invisible kingdom in you and the agreements that you make become the visible around you. And my final point, it comes to deed. It comes to the outworking. We were designed by God, spirit, soul, body, not body, soul, spirit. We are designed to live from the inside out, not the outside in. Therefore, our circumstances don't define us. Our spiritual truth does. Now, what's our spiritual truth? That with every breath that we take, the kingdom of heaven bursts in us, through us, and out of us. And our agreements define our circumstances, not the other way around. But in Matthew 11, it says this. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his... Why did he send two? Because two was an accurate witness. Okay. And said to him, are you the coming one or do we look for another? In essence, J Jesus is cousin. This is, this is John the Baptist that baptized him. You know, the booming voice from heaven. John was there. This is the John that said, um, I'm not worthy to, to, to tie his sandals. This is John. But John's having a human moment. He's having a moment of doubt. And he says, Jesus, look, I, um, I talked about the kingdom of heaven and um, I'm in prison are you that guy? Like, did, did I miss it? Are, are you that guy? 
Watch Jesus' response. He doesn't just say, oh, you just need to believe me because I said it. He says this. Jesus answered and said to them, go and tell John the things which you hear and see. I love this. I love this. Because it means the kingdom of heaven reality has a practical outworking to it. Tell John what you're hearing and what you are seeing. Some, this is not just some, this is not just some out there kind of metaphysical kingdom that you're never really going to see outworked. It's just kind of this, this crazy little sect of people that, that think in a weird way and we just talk about the kingdom of heaven and it never becomes tangible and practical. This Jesus is saying, John, you don't have to doubt me, not because of what I'm just saying to you and that you heard the booming voice. You don't have, to, not just that. John, believe me because of what you are hearing and what you are seeing. The blind see and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. The kingdom of heaven is action. It looks like something. I've been watching this season, this, this series called The Chosen. And it's an adaptation of Jesus's life and his disciples' life. And it's a really beautiful narrative. And so it's called The Chosen. And there's this moment where Peter challenges Jesus in the calling of Matthew, the tax collector. Now remember this, that Matthew was the tax collector in the very region that Peter and James and John and Andrew and the disciples that were fishermen would get taxed. So Matthew is pretty much taking money from these people and paying Rome. So he is not really popular with the disciples. So in this adaptation, there is this sacred moment, even though we know it's not necessarily in the literal Bible, in the adaptation, there is this sacred moment. Something that just made, made me leap on the inside. I'm not going to lie. I got even a little teary. Peter is arguing with Jesus and Jesus turns around and says to Peter when Peter says this, but this is different. Like Matthew's different. He's not like one of us. Jesus turns around to him and says, Peter, get used to different. Hey, is that not the message of the kingdom? Get used to different? Isn't that like one of the biggest signs ever of the kingdom of heaven? Get used to different. Get used to disruption. This is not a kingdom of this world. This is a, this is a kingdom where you set your eyes on things above that then affect the things here on earth, not the other way around. Why? Because it's spirit, soul, body, not body, soul, spirit. Living from the inside out, not the outside in. And so he says to Peter, get used to different. And you see that right through all of the scriptures then and the stories that Jesus is, it affects humanity. A Samaritan, a good Samaritan, get used to different. A woman at the well that becomes the town evangelist, get used to different. Tax collectors, fishermen, being called disciples, get used to different. Lepers being touched and healed and cleansed, get used to different. The, different, the, the dead being raised, get used to different. Calling God Father, get used to different. The message of the kingdom is get used to different. Get used to different in the outworking of everything that you see. Don't settle for the status quo. For this is not a kingdom that is like Rome or led by Caesar or any of the other kingdoms of this world. It is a kingdom that brings uniqueness and difference to it. Let's keep reading. My some final reflections is this. The kingdom of God is a divine disruption for good in the world. The kingdom of God explodes in us, through us, and around us if we are aware of God with every breath that we take. You can take a moment right now from wherever you're watching, whatever time zone you're watching in, and just take a deep breath in and breathe out and become aware of God. And you can even say to yourself out loud if you'd like, God, your kingdom is filling me. It's engaging with me and I surrender my ideas for your ideas. In this breath, I'm filled with love and joy and peace and all the benefits of the kingdom. Number two, our kingdom agreements define our reality because our words become flesh. Can I just pause there for a minute? I want to challenge people that, that think the kingdom of heaven is a bunch of whinging. Um, when God said, let there, let there be light, or rather, let the one who is light shine. And he spoke creativity, a problem, and a, he, he saw a problem and he solved it. 
using creativity. Notice he didn't whinge about the earth being void and violent and like, you know, not perfect. He didn't, he didn't get angry. He didn't start a picketing group or a Facebook group and said, let's all get mad about darkness on the earth. He solved it using creativity and because his words became reality. So if our words became flesh, so if I challenge you to do a week audit of your words over yourself, over your family, in, in, in conversation with people, what you're complaining about, what you're celebrating, what you're thankful for, how many of your words would be positive? Like if they literally became flesh and stood in front of you, how much would be positive and how much would be negative? Just do a week's audit and see what your words and your subconscious are actually believing. So kingdom agreements can't just remain spiritual. We can't just believe up here that they're never going to become something. We have to start agreeing with them. And in the agreeing with it, we start bringing them here to earth. They have to be agreed with in order to manifest. Our words become reality because we live in a voice activated reality. And finally, the kingdom of heaven here on earth disrupts normal, creates change and momentum. The future fits who we are for generations. The kingdom of heaven, whilst coming into our timeline, so close, it's in every breath that we take, but it's holistic and God exists outside of time, yet he chooses with every breath that we take to come in and enter and engage our very humanity. But in that, every breath that we take shouldn't just be about us. It shouldn't just be about what's the status quo. How do I keep my generation safe? How do we, as kingdom of heaven leaders, bringing it here to earth. How do we see it affect the generations to come? Because it will disrupt. Why? Get used to different. <laughs> oh, but this is how we've always done things. Get used to different. That's Jesus's message for us here, even right now, even in the circumstances that we've lived through. He's saying, get used to different. Oh, you didn't, you liked how you did that before. That's cool. That was good for that era, but get used to different. Get used to different. Because when we get used to different and the adventure of the kingdom of heaven and Jesus's message, we are far more innovative in seeing the generations reached with his message and the kingdom. But let me close with this. Do not fear. Do not be afraid of disruption. Do not be afraid of what you're agreeing with when you agree with him, even if you don't fully understand it. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to... Oh, breathe easy and rest in him. Have restful increase, not stressful increase. It says, do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure. Why don't you say that right now? Good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Your father's, it's relational, it's personal. It's a great gift. You're not trying to earn it. You're not begging for it. It's the kingdom of heaven that knows no end with an inheritance that knows no bound. May we breathe it in, may we agree with it, and may we manifest it and outwork it for the whole world to be affected by it for generations. Come on, let's, let, let me pray for you right now. Father, right now, I just thank you that you're a good, good father and we are your children. We thank you, Lord, that the kingdom of heaven is exploding in us and through us and out of us every time we breathe. May we become more and more aware of who you are and whose we are every single breath that we take. May we agree with what you've already said. May even we be reminded of what you've spoken over our lives through the prophetic words and through our own realities and our own, even when we read the word, remind us who we are and remind us what we are agreeing with so we can see it come into fruition. And Father, May we be disrupted. May we be okay with what you are doing with different. May we get used to different and celebrate it and be thankful for it because it outlasts us, outlives us, and the kingdom of heaven shall know no end. And may we be contributors in that and even live in the heritage and legacy of it. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Hey, thank you so much for having me speak into your world, invest and partner with you in this weekend. I really pray that we can see the kingdom of heaven, build momentum in everything that you do. 
I look forward to seeing what God does in your lives personally and as a community of people. God bless you and I look forward to seeing you soon.